Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. What we're going to be doing in this episode is moving a step closer to actually getting the engine out and hopefully, depending upon the time it takes, um, we'll actually get it dropped out of the frame. Now what I've done uh, in the meantime, off camera, is I've gone about disconnecting the rest of the wiring loom um, from, from the bike. And here it is, that is, that is the complete loom. Um, and yeah, it's uh, obviously um, Going to need it's going to need a little bit of inspection. Check everything, make sure everything's good. Make sure the uh, you know that there's no corrosion in there and all that sort of stuff. Replacing any plugs that need it. Um, you can you can still get the plugs uh, off into, um, they're, they're not particularly cheap, but I'll only replace the ones that I require replacement. Um, the other thing I took out was the fuel pump. Uh, uh, I had to take the fuel pump out because this little mounting bolt here had uh, two grounds from the loom into it, so I removed that as well. Uh, but <laughs> that is the uh, state of the cable, the, the, the cable, the hose, should I say, that goes to the uh, fuel pump is absolutely knackered. Um, so that was going to leak everywhere, all over a hot engine, um, uh, annoyingly. So it's, uh, it's a good job we've um, taken it off. Not sure if this is an original part or not. Um, this wire here looks to be fairly new compared to the rest of the loom, this cable. Got a Mitsubishi badge on the back as well, um, so I don't know whether the Mitsubishi make the fuel pumps for them or not. Um, but as far as I could tell, it was working because the bike did run, so uh, happy with that for the moment. Um, I'll obviously test it at some point uh, prior to refitting it. Okay, um, other than that, the uh, the only cables that are left uh, are obviously going to the switch gear, the ignition, all that sort of stuff, and I've pulled them through the frame so they're out of the way and they're not going to interfere with anything. Um, what we're going to do now, though, um, as I said before, is I'm going to pop the clutch cover off and the stator cover and we're going to remove the clutch basket and the uh, the rotor for the stator uh, flywheel um, because it's just going to be easier to do it while it's, while it's fitting in the frame with the chain on etc uh, etc et so yeah thanks for stopping by let's uh, let's get amongst it <laughs> start with the clutch side first you can see the uh, the damage on here but as I showed in a previous episode I do have a brand new one of these uh, genuine Kawasaki to go on it when it's um, when we rebuild the engine so I'm particularly worried um, what we do need to do first is disconnect the clutch cable now the clutch cable goes into the linkage just there but in order to be able to get some play on it what we're going to do is undo this lock nut like that and then we should have more than enough play to get to disconnect it. And there we are. So that's the clutch cable disconnected. The um, the release lever, obviously, as I turned it, disengaged with the, uh, the, the pull rod on the, uh, on the clutch and um, obviously I'm able to pull it out. Now obviously there's a seal in here, there's a needle bearing and all that good stuff. I've got all of that for the new cover. One thing I will say is this, um, this uh, little return spring, this torsion spring here is actually broken. There should be a little hook which hooks over the end of that and it just gives it assistance to re reset itself uh, and keep it in the right place. But this one's obviously broken so that needs replacing as well. So I'll stick that to one side for the moment and then what we're gonna do is um, pull the cover off. So, Now what I think I'll do is I'll grab my um, drip tray because although I have drained the oil out, there is likely to be some behind here. 
and uh, obviously I don't want to drop it all over the floor. So I'll go grab the tray and then we'll look at pulling the cover off. There's all the bolts. They're, uh, they're all the same size on this particular application, so that doesn't really matter too much. I'll take the uh, oil filler cap off, I can get a finger in to, to pull with. And there we go. As like I said, we lost a little bit of oil, but not too much. And uh, yeah, there we go. There's the um, things like this inside here. Um, I'll need to retain that because I didn't get one of these with the new one. Um, but uh, obviously I did get a new side glass and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is a perfectly usable cover. It's just scuffed and obviously I don't want a scuffed one. One thing I don't have is I don't have the label, but again, I'll, I'll pick one of them up from, uh, from a dealer. I have no idea how much that's going to cost for a label, but... Um, Obviously, I want a little bit of um, originality in the bike, so I will grab one of those. What I'm going to do, throw all of the nuts and the bolts in there. And what we'll do now is we'll look at getting the clutch off. Okay, what we want to do is just crack off all the bolts holding the pressure plate on. them all out. If we do them a little bit at a time each one it makes it come off evenly. And eventually that is all the way out. Obviously with these, there is a service limit for the length of the springs. I don't know whether these are um, factory spec springs, heavy duty ones or not, I've no idea. Um, but what I'll do, I'll just buy a clutch kit with another set of springs and then we'll know that's good. And there we are, right. Give the pull, the, the pull rod a uh, little tug and then the pressure plate's off uh, and there we are there's the uh, there's a little bearing for it right now what we can do is we can pull the uh, pull the whole clutch pack off uh, out and then uh, look at getting the basket off right then as I said a second ago we're going to remove the clutch pack but I'm not going to do that until after I've taken the nut off because holding the clutch pack will keep we'll lock it together uh, basically applying pressure here should the friction keep the uh, the center basket center of the basket still but what i've also done i've put it into a high gear and i'm also going to lean on the rear brake at the same time which is the reason why i haven't actually removed the brake as yet anyway so i'm leaning on the brake wheel solid what i'm going to do is buzz the knot off And there we are, that was fairly easy. Now what we can do is we can get the clutch pack out uh, and then remove the basket from the end of the, uh, from the, end of the shaft and um, then move over to the other side and do a similar job with the stator. We have a bit of cabling going into the, uh, into the stator housing obviously that's the, that's the three phase cabling that comes from the, uh, from the coil itself in order to uh, run the electrical system on the bike. What we'll do, again, I've got my, got my little oil cap tray, just in case. Now this cover is in better condition than the one on the 
clutch side. However, it's not perfect. So I do want to, I do want to replace it. Just gotta, just gotta find a new one in good condition. I mean, there's a few Chinese ones out there, but I don't particularly want one. That's a Chinese one. I want a, I want a genuine one. It's not going to move at the moment. Let me go and grab a mallet, and then I'll come back and give it a little tap off. Attempt, there's tempting to get a lever behind this and um, lever it off, but the problem is it's quite destructive and it can damage things. She's a coming. She's a coming. I think it's just stuck on the dowels, if anything. There's definitely a dowel there. I think it's probably just, yeah, there's a dowel there. I reckon it's just been retained on the dowels, but she's coming, you can see it. Starting to open up. There we go. Oh, there's another dowel there. Look. And obviously, now she's off. I can feel the, the magnetic attraction between the... There we go. Between the magnets on the rotor and the stator itself. Stator doesn't look terrible. It looks okay. Um, a little bit of darkening around here. Um, I can test that though, we'll give that a test at some point, make sure it's okay. Okay, now what I need to do, buzz that nut off, and then I need a tool in order to pull that off the nose of the crank. Now I've got several tools, which I've used for different bikes, but I don't know if I've got one that's gonna fit this, and I won't know until I try. So what I'll do, get that nut off, and then we'll see what we've got. Okay, so let's buzz this centre bolt off. And there we go. Okay, so looking at uh, this style of flywheel, I think that's going to be... pretty sure this is actually a Kawasaki tool as it goes anyway. And it's left-hand thread. I'm pretty sure I used this tool on a ZX-10R once, I can't remember for certain. Oh no, it's not left-hand thread, it is right-hand thread. And she seems to fit. Then... Let me just make sure that that ball fits through the centre of the ball. Alright, what I think I might do... Let's just get a washer or a coin or something and just put it on the end of the crank because it looks like this is going to work but I don't want that to damage the end of the crank so I'm just going to put like a coin in there just to give it something to press on. Okay, let's get a penny in there, one penny and then screw it back on. Come on. So what we're basically going to be doing here is winding this in, which should pull this off the nose of the crank. And I'm going to use my impact gun for this. Um, sometimes this works, sometimes you put it on and um, it doesn't move, but you can leave it for 10 minutes and later you'll find it's just popped itself off. So we'll give it a go, see how we get on. There we go. Beautiful. And there's the, the gear from the starter motor, just fell off. <laughs> and that is the reason why I wanted to use a penny and not just bear it straight onto the end of the crank. As you can see, it's made a right mess of that. Um, and hopefully, the end of the crank will be no worse for wear for it. Yeah, it looks okay. Looks perfect. Right. So, we've got this off. 
um, in here, yeah, that, there it is. The uh, the woodruff key obviously engages with the um, the corresponding uh, channel on the uh, on the uh, rotor. And um, yeah, there we there we go. Right, so now we've got both of them off. We won't be fighting with them when they're when it's on the bench, uh, and we won't have any dramas getting them off because they're already off. So what we can do now is we can actually drop the engine out of the frame. So what I need to do is obviously I need to pull out all the, um, the mountings, um, the various mountings around the engine that hold it to the frame. And then I need to put a jack underneath to support the, uh, the weight of the engine. Once all the mountings are out, I can then lower it to the ground and then we're good. So I'll go grab a jack, find out where uh, I'll have a good look around, find all the mountings and we'll get them off. Stuck on the dowels. Come on. There we go. Ooh, that's nasty. That's nasty. Now, what it might be worth doing actually is again, like I did before, um, bezing this uh, bezing this sprocket nut off because that again will be difficult to get off um, out of the bike. And again, the brake's still connected. So I can use the brake to lock it up and then we can bez that off. Um, now obviously there is, a, there is a locking washer which looks like it's been absolutely mangled in by some with, someone with hand fists and it looks like they've reused it again from the previous occasion which, <laughs> which is obviously a no but um, yeah so what I'll do go and get me, uh, get me drifts and my chisel or whatever and just bend the tabs back and then we can get that nut bezed off. and uh, a little bit round here, it's flying her off. Pretty sure these uh, n these these uh, nuts are actually a, is it a nut. Yeah, it's a nut. Pretty sure these nuts are actually a one-shot deal as well. So that they'll probably be replaced. Um, right. Let me go and get the right size socket. And we'll uh, we'll get her off. Okay, what I need is a 27 mil socket. Now I've got a 27 mil impact socket, but it's not deep enough for this, so I'm having to go non-impact on this. Don't do this at home, kids. Um, I'm sure somebody will uh, tell me that I'm an idiot in the uh, in the comments. And uh, I've got a good kid. Right. Um, what I'm going to do is apply the brake and buzz this sucker off. And she don't want to come off. She's tight. I think what we'll do, we'll get a bit of heat on it and hopefully that'll free it off. 
So I'll go and grab uh, I'll go and grab my blowtorch, and uh, yeah, see if uh, see if an application of a little bit of heat helps. Okay, let's try again. She don't want to come. Right, I'm gonna to have to uh, I think I might have to uh, get a big breaker bar out and see if that'll fray her off. I was thinking about putting a piece of wood through the spokes against the spring arm, but what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to take the smaller piece and I'm going to put that under there. And that is jammed in the sprocket. Now hopefully, that will do the job. I reckon it might. So let's have a go and see how we get on. Well, that didn't work. It literally chopped the piece of wood in half. So, um, <laughs> that was quite uh, quite interesting. Yeah, I'll give it another go. See how we get on. This is proving tough nut to crack. That took some effort. Whew. And there we go. I don't think I've ever seen a sprocket quite like that in my life. That was insane. Right, so let's recover our bit of chewed up wood. Yeah. Now we can release it just as on the rear wheel unhook the chain off the front sprocket and then it's engine out time. Thank goodness for that. Whew. Okay, so I've had a bit of a tidy up, picked up all the tools that I had lying around the floor, obviously the, uh, the clutch and everything I've put to one side. What we're going to do now is we're going to drop the engine out of the, uh, out of the frame. Now this is fairly straightforward, um, there's three sets of mountings, one just down here and that one goes all the way through the frame to the other side of the engine, another one just here and if we look just down inside, this bracket here is um, where the uh, where the nut is, just on the other side of this bracket about here. And there's a spacer on this side, and the end of the bolt is here. So it's quite a long one. Again, same at the bottom. Um, and then here, we've got a bolt. This is a short bolt, probably about two or three inches long, and the same on that side. But on this side of the frame, there's a uh, like a lock nut, uh, like a locking bolt, basically, um, like a pinch bolt. That's what it is, a pinch bolt. So we undo that one, and there's another one just here. So 
So that's the two pinch bolts undone. Um, if we'd have left them, and the bolt wouldn't have come out. Um, and then, yeah, that's uh, that's where we are. So what I'm going to do now is I think I will undo the two bolts holding the bracket on the inside of the frame. Just undo those. Just slacken them off. I'm not actually going to take them all the way out just yet. And then what we can do is we can whip all the uh, mounting bolts out. So, what I've got here is I've got a ratchet, and then this one I will. Foot. There's a nut on the other side of this bolt, but it's captive. It's the, the, the block is shaped to receive the nut. I'll undo this one. I will do the same on the other side, on its opposite number. Here you can see the nut that has been held captive. Quite simply. And again, that's nice and loose. Right, now what I'm gonna do is um, undo the two, oh, well, I'm gonna crack off the two rear mounts. And what I'll do with that is, just in case the whole thing wants to turn, like it is, One cracked off. Just gotta find the other one. Where are we? I think we're there. And again. Yeah, this one's one of turn as well. Tighter. So, with these nuts, they can now just come off. There's one. the bolts yet uh, I haven't pulled the bolts out so obviously everything's still suspended on the bolts and what I'm going to do now obviously is I'm going to start pulling the bolts out so what I want to do is take the weight of the engine so to do that I've got the trolley jack and I put a block of wood on it and what I want to do basically support it under there on this block of wood And there we go. That is the way the engine suspended. Um, obviously, the, the front shocks did unload ever so slightly. Um, but what I obviously want to do is just take the weight of the engine. I don't want to lift the bike because if I lift the whole bike, then the bolts will be holding the weight of the bike as well, and I don't want to do that. I just want to take the take the strain slightly, and then we can pull the bolts out. So I take these ones first at the front. There's one, there's like, I think that bush is like captive in there. Yeah, it feels like it. Um, I'm not sure if this nut will come out. Yes, it does. So there's the, there's the nut, that's the first one. What I need to do 
Same on the other side. And there's the nut. So now the engine is suspended on the two rear ones. So what I'll do, I think I will take out the bottom one first and leave the top one in and then the top one will be the one that I actually pull out last when we actually uh, when we actually come to dropping it down. So yeah, let's uh, let's get that bottom one out. Right then, so we're now in a position just to remove these two bolts and we can get the engine dropped down. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my a little punch just to tap the tap the bolt out. The frame, uh, the engine is just resting on the inside of the frame at the moment. Um, she's not going anywhere. Let me just put these back up on the bench, out of the way. Now then, what we can do now, and hopefully without an issue, is gently lower the jack and the engine with it. Here she comes. Okay, let me just see where we are. There we go. <laughs> it felt, felt like there was a bit of resistance and then suddenly it dropped. Okay, let me just make sure that nothing's connected to anything it shouldn't be. Those are with the engine. We've only got some coolant hoses. Yeah, all looks good, right. Let's take her down. And there we go. That is the engine out of the bike. And then up on the bench. Whew, there we go, right. Bit of a mission. Uh, spilled a bit of oil and coolant there, but I'll sort that in a moment. Right, now what we can do now is pull this out of the way. Forget the block. I'll be able to lift this up and support her under there. I think I'll get another one as well in a minute just to stabilize it but there that is the engine we'll obviously be pulling that apart at some point but here we are now with the frame um oh. <sighs> bit out of breath obviously the chain this chain is absolutely scrap uh, it always was that's why i didn't really mind jamming things in there to uh to get it off what we need to do is obviously the front forks coming off the yokes everything Swing arms coming off, these need to come off, and then um, I think, yeah, that's pretty much everything off. Um, obviously, the brakes need to come off, the engine, um, oh, sorry, the, the frame itself is going to get stripped, uh, acid stripped, and then um, repainted um, with things like this, obviously repaired. Uh, they should all be good. Um, what I'll do is I will t t take all the things off, like the brakes and stuff off, because they're, they're only holding with a couple of bolts, and I don't need to video that right now, but I'll probably do that for the next episode. Um, yeah, well, I think we'll leave it there. Um, pretty productive day, uh, done quite a lot, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, the engine will be getting pulled apart in a different episode um, at some point. Um, you know, this is a... This is a, uh, a marathon, not a sprint. We'll, uh, we'll be covering everything. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Stick around for more from Kev Shed, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have plenty to uh, plenty for you to watch. Don't forget to follow me on the, uh, on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, uh, Kev Shed. Links in the description. I'll see you all again for the next episode. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now.